Hi. Um, so I am a fresh new baby graduate, um, and I'm about $217,000 in debt. Um, this is not something that you want to play catch up with. It doesn't get any more simple than that. This is not rocket science. $200,000 worth of debt, and you haven't made a dollar yet. Let's get to it. Genesee is with us. She is in Springfield, Illinois. Hi, Genesee. How are you? Hi, Genesee. I'm doing good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Um, so I am a fresh new baby graduate, um, and I'm about $217,000 in debt. Um, Whoa. Both of my parents didn't go to college, so I don't really have anybody to talk to about, like, loan repayment and things of that nature. Um, I did luckily get gifted your course um, from a Facebook group that I'm in, and I'm on step two. But I'm wondering, um, as a, so I'm a single parent. Um, I'm 26 and she's 10. I had her at 16. Okay. Um, and I just did school straight through, so um, no working in between high school, undergrad, and then I just graduated from veterinary school. Okay. Um, oh, wow. So I have my doctorate. I was getting ready to say. So I, I was getting ready to say, thank like. Thank you very much. She said a fresh baby graduate. Okay. All right. Let's listen first. Um, I'm just wondering how realistic it is, you know, because it seems like I'll never get to step three with that much debt. And um, I know I, like I said, I'm on step two in the, in the course, um, and I see a lot of, like, married couples. We work so with a lot. We work your... with a lot of veterinarians. Um, okay. and, and entree leadership, uh, because a lot of them come through to learn how to run their business, the business aspect of being a veterinarian. And so what we're, what I'm discovering just in having conversations with them is that there are okay. veterinarians. Okay, all right. We're not even going to react to the entire video. This is what she should have done, okay? Hey, y'all, real quick, if you're here, your family. I call it Team Green Ellis. So I want you to join Team Green Ellis below. It's completely free. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, and that thumbs up so you can stay in the loop with all things Team Green Ellis. All right, let's get back into the video. Um, parents, especially watching this video, she mentioned that, you know, neither of her parents had a college degree. I think that it's safe to assume that they had no uh, understanding of the financial landscape of paying for a college degree. This is what she should have done. This is what, matter of fact, her parents should have done. Her parents on the front end, and parents, you can do the same thing, and I hope that she will do this for her child as well. On the front end is that you equip yourself with the right information. Period. She's got a six, excuse me, she's got a uh, 10 year old, and she's just getting out of college. She said she worked straight through, right? Meaning went straight from high school, undergrad. And, um, on the front end, this, this is not something that you want to play catch up with. This is not something that you want to play catch up with. $200,000 worth of debt, and you haven't made a dollar yet. Just think about that. Just think about that. You. How much money have you made to be able to pay this debt off? Have you made, not will make? Because nothing is guaranteed. There are no guarantees. There's risk involved. College is an investment. It's an investment. It's not a guarantee, it's an investment. Specifically, it is a financial investment. You're gonna put money into it or someone else is gonna put money into it for you and in turn, you'll get a degree that will give you money back. Now, if whether or not this investment is worth it is going to be solely contingent upon what you put in. Does it make any more sense? Like, I can't, it doesn't get any more simple than that. This is not rocket science. Okay? This is not rocket science. You, you don't have to have a college degree or any college experience to understand that you have to make a sacrifice first in order to get a big return or... If you don't rather if rather if you don't make the right sacrifice or if you don't choose the right school or invest your time so that you can get the right information or if you don't have the money to be able to pay for college, it is going to be a money pit for your child.
It's going to be a money pit for your child. All right. Um, I want to give a different... Um, I want to do something different with this video. I want to tell you guys what she could have done instead to evade this $200,000 um, situation. All right, so in the front, on the front end, right, going from undergrad, she could have went to a community college and then transferred to finish her four-year degree, okay? She obviously could have applied to scholarships as well. The community college option is in 99% in of the case, 99% of the time, going to be the most affordable option. Um, she could have also taken uh, classes in high school that could have uh, given her college credits as well, right? Getting closer to getting that college credit and not having to spend as much money, right? So these are options. These are opportunities that you right now as the parent preparing for your kid to go to college can be exploring, especially if you're in the younger high school, ninth and 10th grade range, be looking at these types of opportunities that your kid can use to get ahead. OK, it's going to save you money and it's going to help to accelerate their wealth building. OK, so look for dual enrollment programs. Look for community colleges if you know that you're strapped financially. In addition to that, if you don't have the money to invest, you can invest your time. Your kids can be applying to scholarships from as early as kindergarten. So even in the ninth grade, you need to be having them apply to scholarships. Let's say they only win one and it's, an, it's a one thousand dollar scholarship, but they do it every year. They're going to it into it with $4,000, right? Another thing that the parents should have been doing, and parents, if you're listening to me tell you this right now, you need to be putting money aside for this. Yes, it's your responsibility to help them get started. They don't have anything. They especially don't have any money. I know they think they are grown. I know they might step out of line every once in a while, but they are your baby, even though they're in an 18-year-old's body. So put your money aside for them. Sacrifice your Starbucks. Put some money in a custodial account, an investment account, a 529, something that's going to grow so that they will have a head start. Help them. Well, it's not my responsibility. I didn't go to college and I came out just fine. Okay, that's you. It's 2024. Different time, different landscape, different playing field. Yes, the principles of success are still the same. I agree. But if you know that your kid is desiring to get a college degree, you are not you're doing them a disservice by not helping them to prepare financially. It's, it, it's like it's like, OK. Anyway, let me give you all the steps. Let me not go on a rant. I want to give you all things that could be done and you can also do. Put your money aside. OK, right now, my wife and I and we have a two year old and an almost six month old baby babies. OK, they will never borrow student loans. They already have more money combined than my wife and I had going into college. Sorry, sorry. They they already have more money individually. Than my wife and I had combined going into college. Already. And, and it's not because Jordan and Juanita are so popping. They got it all together. They got all the money in the world. That is not the case. It's a sacrifice. Do you hear me? It's a sacrifice. If you're not willing to make the sacrifice for your kid, don't put them out there in that regard. Don't let them set themselves up for financial demise by signing on to a $40,000 a year bill with no ability to pay in hopes that they can get a job after. That's that's. Oh, Jesus. All right. Dual enrollments, community college, setting money aside, applying for scholarships. And here are five things that you can do. Here's the most important step. College choice. I was, on a, I was in a seminar at a local high school about a week ago, and I told them, just like how I'm about to tell you, college choice is probably the number one aspect um, in the college planning process because colleges are premium products. They're just like cars. You have Hondas, you've got Hondas, you've got Mazdas, and you've got Maseratis, okay? The brand name schools, you're going to pay for them. Just because your degree is more affordable or costs less, it does not mean that your child's degree will be less. 
I'm pretty sure when she got hired for that first job, right? I, I, we haven't even gotten to the point in the video where she talked about her job. I'm assuming that she got a job. I'm pretty sure they didn't ask her or care as much about where she went to school as much as they do about can she do her job. I just want to empower you with this information, y'all. It's not rocket science, okay? Don't get married to a school before you understand what they are requiring of you financially and if whether or not you can meet those requirements because it's not just going to get better. It's not going to just work out. That's fantasy. And nobody that I know lives there. Nobody that I know that's successful lives there. There are a bunch of people I know that live in fantasy. And you know what? They don't like where they live.